Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Steveston, Richmond East. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Uh, before I begin my comments, uh, I'd like to note that I'll be sharing my time with the member from Guelph. Mr. Speaker, uh, in uh, commenting uh, on uh, Bill C-49, I'll be focusing on the liberalization of the international rules of Canadian airlines. Mr. Speaker, Canadian travellers and their experiences are top of mind for our government. During consultations conducted by the Minister of Transport, we asked Canadian travellers for their feedback, and they were clear. They want lower-cost air travel, more opportunities for leisure and business travel, and they want to see Canada become a more attractive travel destination for visitors. They ask for long-term sustainable competition, which will allow for the introduction of additional air services, improved air connectivity, and perhaps above all, more choice. And the government, Mr. Speaker, has listened and is committed to achieving tangible improvements to the traveler experience. And as a result of this feedback we received, a number of proposals have been introduced in Bill C-49 to help improve the traveler experience in Canada. For example, the government intends to liberalize international ownership restrictions for Canadian air carriers. So exactly what does this mean for Canadian travelers? Well, let me begin, Mr. Speaker, by briefly describing this initiative. Like most countries, Canada limits international ownership and control of domestic air carriers. Under the Canada Transportation Act, non-Canadians currently cannot possess more than 25% of the voting shares of a Canadian carrier. Additionally, Canadian air carriers must also be controlled by Canadians, which means they may not be subject to controlling influence by international investors. And limits on foreign ownership and control of air carriers are the norm around the world. For instance, in the United States, the limit is 25 percent, while the European Union, Korea, Australia, and New Zealand allow up to 49 percent, and Japan allows 33.3 percent. Limits, Mr. Speaker, vary depending on the circumstance of each country and the circumstances of each region. However, Canada's current ownership limits may be acting as a barrier to new services and enhanced competition. Two prospective ultra-low cost carriers, Canada Jetlines and Enerjet, have already applied for and received exemptions to the current limits on international ownership from the Minister of Transport. Both companies, well, they successfully argued that under the current 25 percent limit, there is insufficient risk capital in the Canadian market to support the launch of new services. So on reflecting on this reality and the Canadian Transportation Act review recommendations, the government is proposing changes which would allow international investors to own up to 49 per cent of the voting shares of Canadian air carriers by introducing legislation that would amend the Act and all other relevant Acts. As mentioned earlier, countries have different approaches to international ownership of air carriers, and our government wants to make sure that Canadian carriers compete on a level playing field. So to protect the competitiveness of our air sector and to support connectivity, no single international investor or any combination of international air carriers would be allowed to own more than 25 percent. Now, the direct impact of higher levels of international investment is that Canadian air carriers would have access to a wider pool of risk capital. This would allow air carriers to be better funded and could allow new carriers, which are otherwise not able to find sufficient risk capital, to enter the Canadian market. New carriers, including ultra-low-cost carriers offering extremely competitive prices, are expected to bring more competition into the entire Canadian air travel sector. This could, in turn, 
reduce the cost of air transportation and open new markets to Canadian consumers and shippers. Mr. Speaker, small markets currently underserved by existing carriers could also benefit from services by new carriers. For instance, airports in smaller cities that currently offer services to a very limited number of destinations could benefit from the addition of new services, since we know that ultra-low-cost carriers use the smaller airports as their hubs. All this could lead to more choice when purchasing an airline ticket, more travel destinations for all travellers, including those from smaller cities, and lower prices for Canadian travellers. Additionally, there could also be benefits for airports and suppliers and the entire country as more jobs and more prosperity is added to the Canadian economy. To finish, Mr. Speaker, let me underscore that the experience of Canadian air travellers is a great priority for the Government of Canada. We know that it is also a priority for Canadians. So this is why we have proposed to increase international ownership restrictions for Canadian air carriers. If implemented, we believe this initiative could significantly improve the travel experience for all Canadians. And once in place, it could also help lower prices, support increased competition among air carriers, and provide more choice to Canadians when it comes to purchasing an airline ticket, and ultimately improve service and connectivity for Canadian travellers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Question and commentaire, l'honorable.